All right, Dave here with another exciting tutorial, and today I'm going to be talking about Maya versus Blender, strictly on the interface kind of customization capabilities. Okay, and um, what I'll do is I'll demonstrate Maya's interface kind of customization, and then I'll do Blender's, and then at the end I'll kind of compare and kind of give you my two cents on who I think won on this one. So make sure that you stick around to the end to see who's the winner. So let's go ahead and kind of dive right in. I'll start with Maya. Now with Maya, um, we have, uh, a lot of times we'll have the four different viewports like this. So I can see it in perspective, and then I can see it inside, front, or top. And a lot of times we'll have the outliner. So this is kind of the basic uh, viewport in Maya. Now you can see here, I can click on this one, and this will be full perspective. This will be the four view, and this one will be um, basically kind of split screen side by side. Now I'm going to go to the four view and just talk about how I can kind of customize this, if you will. So let's say if I was doing something else, I don't know, like rendering this guy, for example. I can go to panels, and then I can say panel, and I can have this panel be whatever I want. So I could do something like render view. Okay, now this is the render view. Um, and this one, maybe I want this panel to be the outliner. Okay, I don't know why, because I've got the outliner right there, but let's just say if I did, I could also make these different sizes like this, so maybe I, I don't want the, that to be like that. And down here, let's say if I was doing animation, I could go panel, and then I could say, hmm, um, maybe time, uh, time editor, okay? Um, really, you know, however I want to use this, you can see that it is pretty customizable. And then if I hover over this window, and if I tap the space bar, it's going to be full screen. If I tap the space bar again, it's going to go back to what I was. If I go here, tap the space bar, it's going to be full screen. Tap the space bar again, it's going to go back to this. Um, now, I also have default workspaces up here that kind of Maya put together for us. So if I want to do modeling, um, I'm going to click on the modeling workspace, and it's going to give me kind of what I need here. You can see this giving me a shelf. It's giving me some stuff over here. If I go to rigging, for example, it's going to also give me my custom shelf, and it's going to kind of give me the editors that I need here. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Now, let's say if you wanted to also kind of create your own. So instead of just the um, one, four, or side by side, I could also go window, and then I can say... Um, I could also kind of set this up. So hold on here. Uh, display. Actually, it's not up here. It's going to be in panels. And then I can kind of come in here. And I can say panel layouts. And I can choose. OK, hmm, what do I want? Maybe I want three panes uh, split top. So if I click on that, I can see that this panel actually um, now kind of grew into more panels. So you can see that I can have more panels here. This is getting kind of crazy. I'll tap the space bar and now I can kind of toggle between that within a panel which is kind of cool. Okay. Um, and then any of those panels could be whatever I want. Now the other cool thing is that I have shelves up here. Okay. So the shelf is a customized kind of button and if I wanted to create my own shelf I could just go here and I could say new shelf and I could say um, let me just call this Dave and now I can see my shelf is empty, and if I found myself going into, let's say, the modeling, and I had a bunch of tools that I wanted to use, I could just hold down Control Shift, and I can add, holding down Control Shift, I can add the tools that I need. Okay. Now, if you were too lazy to do that, you can see that they give you those already. So you can see here's the modeling ones, here's the rigging ones, um, and everything. And I should also point out that Maya is organized by these drop-down menus. So I can see that if I'm in modeling. It's going to give me all my modeling menus. If I'm in rigging, it'll just give that, um, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of cool. The other thing is if I hold down the space bar. So if I don't tap the space bar, but if I hold it down, I can see that all the menus pop up kind of at my fingertips. So it's going to be right there. And if I click on these, and they're going to be identical to what's up here. Um, and then they also have kind of this north, uh, west east and south zone. So if I click on the north zone, it's going to give me kind of uh, a different um, kind of hidden menus that pop up here. Okay. And I can see that if I click on that, it's going to go like that. So there's there are some shortcuts that you can click on. Like if you're modeling, you can have these uh, what are called marking menus that kind of pop up. I'll just kind of show real quickly here. So if I go to window, um, I can go to settings preferences and I can go to my marking menu editor. 
And if I click on that, if I click on, uh, I'm just going to delete this one, so uh, do not back up. Okay, if I go to um, create a marking menu, you can see here it is. And what I could do is, let's say if I wanted um, specific tasks, so let's say if I wanted this, I could just kind of drag it in here. Oh, I'm going to just middle mouse drag and drop it. And you can see that now this doesn't make a lot of sense. I'd probably have like more like modeling tools or whatever, but I could have them anywhere that I want. And then I can left mouse button click here to kind of test it. And you can see that, hey, those kind of float up and uh, they're right there. That's kind of cool. And if I save this, um, it says, hey, enter a menu name. So I'm going to say edit and I'm going to call this, you know, Dave. MM for marking menu, save. Oh, I guess that name is taken. That's a pretty popular name. That's pretty cool. Um, so let's see, edit Dave test menu. Okay, cool. And now here it is. And now if I wanted to, um, I'm going to set this to the hotbox and I'm going to say, hey, I want it anytime I go to the south zone. And if I go into the south zone and middle click. So what does that mean if I hit apply settings? That if I tap my space bar, go down here, middle click, um, or actually, let's see, I'm going to just set it to left click there, apply settings. And if I come down here and I should be able to bring that up. That's weird. Um, oh, I see. So it's. It looks like these are my um, settings. I don't know if it got overridden, uh, but I could, again, drop this in. Save. Okay, cool. Now if I come in here and left mouse click, it's going to be whatever this is. So I, I would just have to save that. Um, obviously, I don't really use that feature all that often. Yeah, here it is. Um, but you can have that pop up and it's all kind of a click away. I feel like I like, I do like the shelf up here. I feel like the viewports are kind of a little clunky, a little messy. Um, I feel like I like the fact that I can kind of reset back to four right here. And also on the menus here, I can click on any of the top of the menus and I can kind of drag that out to have it over here. Okay, so again, that's kind of a look at Maya's kind of customizing, if you will, on the interface. Let's take a look at Blender. All right, so this is Blender, and you can see I kind of have a similar starting point here, and I'm just gonna kind of drag this over, and I'm gonna kind of explain this in a second, because I feel like Blender usually starts more in just kind of a single uh, perspective view, okay, like that. Now, first off, I can see here that they already do some dividing for us. So if I'm modeling, it's gonna give me what is makes sense for the modeling menu set. So I can see all my stuff, I can see my tools here. If I'm sculpting, it again, it gives me exactly what I need. Here's my sculpting brushes. Or if I'm UV editing, it's gonna give me the UV map and this. So in other words, each one of those kind of has their custom layout to that. I'm just gonna go back to layout here. Um, the other thing with this is that if I wasn't sure what these tools are called, there's kind of a hidden thing here. If I click on this arrow and pull this out, I can either stack it so it's not as long, or if I pull it out farther, it'll give me the name of them. If this is really cool in the sculpting. I can see that there's a long kind of list of brushes here. And if I grab this and pull that, you can see I can have it side by side, or I can have the names of them. I kind of like to have the names of them when I'm learning it, or if I'm teaching it, I think that's kind of cool. Um, again, I'm going to go back to layout. But what about if I want different views? Well, that's really easy. I can go to the top right corner of any viewport, and you can see that my cursor turns into crosshairs. Now I can drag it over, and instantly a new view appears. Okay, now it's kind of silly to have, well, I guess it's two perspectives that could be good, but I could switch this to any view, and I could do that right here. So now let's say if I want this to be um, uh, the image editor, which would be kind of the render view. Now I could grab that and maybe I pull this down vertically here and maybe I want this to be like the side view. So I'm going to come here, go to 3D viewport and I can just click on this or on my number pad, I can press um, the number three key. And that's something that is that is kind of weird on Blender is that the number pad on a keyboard is different 
then uh, pressing the three key on the top of the um, keyboard. And you can change that in the preferences, but uh, by default, it likes to be able to use the number pad as kind of additional hotkeys. Um, let's say if I wanted something else, I could drag this down and maybe I put this to my front view. And it could go like that, or I could have used, um, I think one on the number pad is my front view. And I could have this my top view, and then I could just set this to my other one. So you can see that I can have I can have it similar to um, to Maya there, but I feel like if I wanted to introduce something else, I could just kind of switch this to um, my, I don't know, my timeline, okay? And then I could drag this down, and then I can have this be my, um, let's say, my dope sheet if I wanted to. And, and again, don't worry about what these are. You can just kind of see how clean it is. Now, let's say if I wanted to collapse this, what I can do, if I click on this, and if I drag up, I can see that that arrow appears. And what that'll do is it'll kind of collapse it over it, and there it is. Now, if I drag it over here like that, you can see, again, the arrow appears. It's going to collapse it. And, again, um, if I, again, drag this over here like that, and then I drag it up, it's like that. Now, maybe the first time you're doing this, this might feel a little awkward, but I feel like in just doing this a few times, it's going to be super, super comfortable. And between any of them, I can move them. I can even change these. But I feel like I love the fact that it's it seems a little bit cleaner to change those interfaces um, and than Maya. But I feel like also uh, the fact that we have interfaces here that are preset for us. And if we need to change anything or I want to add anything, I can change it to any of these interfaces and it's going to kind of remember that. I can even go like this. I could click on the plus sign and I can add my new workspace and I can add it, you know, kind of save it and, and have it set up however I want. Okay. The other thing too is that um, let's say if I wanted shortcuts, okay, if I wanted to kind of remember some things. So let's say if I wanted to come in here and I wanted to always um, know where, um, let's see here, maybe like um, edge, I wanted to extrude edges. Okay, I wanted to do that all the time. Well, if I right click, I could say add to quick favorites. Now, if, anytime I press Q, that's going to come up, and here's extrude edges. And if I go to face, if I wanted to inset faces, um, I could just press right click, add to quick favorites, and now if I press Q, it's going to be in my list here. So that's kind of cool. That's similar to the shelf in Maya, but I feel like it's kind of, um, it, I don't know, to me it seems a little cleaner that it's just right there. Um, another thing about Blender is that it's very hotkey intensive, so I feel like um, kind of memorizing the hotkeys in the beginning can be kind of daunting. And also sometimes a hotkey in edit mode, like you can see that I'm in edit mode right now, and if I hit tab, I'm in object mode. Um, now if I pressed R in one of the modes and then I pressed R in a different mode, it could, it could mean something completely different. So you have to understand what mode you're in when you're doing the hotkeys. That's kind of different than Maya as well. So I think that um, when it comes to... Um, when it comes to the interface, I feel like, hands down, I feel like I love Blender's customization of the interface. I think I'm going to give it a thumbs up for Blender here. I do like Maya Shelf, um, kind of the visual um, icons of the shelf. I feel like th that's a really nice kind of feature in Maya. I feel like I use that all the time. I feel like the hotbox feature just seems a little clunky in Maya um, and a little messy. So I feel like I want to want to use that, but I feel like I, I just haven't gotten into that. But I feel like, again, Blender's interface just seems really clean and slick. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And for videos like this um, every week, please make sure to subscribe and share this with others. Thank you.